So it's really a pleasure that I have this opportunity to share some of my thoughts with Anash. And I would like to talk primarily about marriage. Of the different things that I do, that's probably the thing that interests me most and gives me most satisfaction. What do we know that a person can do to build for themselves a very happy marriage? What, what are the guidelines? They fall into two areas. One has to do with the issue of ase tov. Are you doing good things to invest in your marriage? People are very busy. In general, people are very busy. Orthodox Jews, with their large families, are busier than the average family. And since part of the people who are going to be listening to this talk are shluchim, they are, in particular, busy. They have a family business that's very, very demanding. It takes a great deal of time. There are many, many expectations of them. And not only do they have a family business, but their wives are typically involved with them in the business. Any stresses that occur in the business, both of them bring home. So the question is, what do we do to build a very powerful, robust relationship at home so that they're able to enjoy each other in spite of all the responsibilities that they have? And one of them is to make sure that they are making time to invest in each other and to invest in the relationship. Very often people get very involved with the demands on them. Our spouses are relatively understanding of us. They don't make the same demands that a boss does at work, that a customer does, that balabatim make on a shaliach, that the principal or teachers of our kids make on us, uh, or that we, where we feel responsible for our kids to help them with their homework. Couples are more successful when it is very clear to them that they allocate some of their time just to the, to the husband and wife being good to each other. And I would divide that also, that Asay Tov, into two categories. One is, do you go out of your way to ease your spouse's burden? If I said to your spouse, what did your husband or what did your wife do this week that really made your life easier? Let me give you an example. This past week, we've had a lot of company in my house. My wife is a wonderful cook. She loves hachnasas orchim. And I could see that she was working very hard, and she was really very tired. So at different points in the meal, where there are tasks that she would normally take on, without her saying anything, I went ahead and I got them done when we cleared the first course off the table. And given how my wife cooks, that usually means eight to ten salads. And they went into the kitchen on the kitchen table. I went ahead and started wrapping them up and seeing to it that they got cleared out of the kitchen and put into the refrigerator and the silverware washed off and dumped into the silverware bucket. Same thing later during the meal. The meal was over. My wife was sitting with our company over dessert. I normally would sit with the company over dessert. I decided I'm getting the kitchen taken care of so when the meal is over, my wife's work is done. After the meal, there was a spill on the floor. I saw my wife reaching for some paper towels to clean up the spill. I took the paper towel out of her hand and I cleaned it up. There's no reason why she can't 
clean up a spill. She normally cleans up a spill. But I felt, I could see she was tired, and I know that she appreciated it. If I'm up late at night working on something that I'm writing, I have a deadline. And it's one o'clock at night. And she'll come down and bring me some fruit, a cup of coffee, just to give me a little support as I'm staying up late and working. That is one aspect of Asetov. In fact, there's a very interesting vort from the Rebbe that relates to this. Uh, the Rebbe talks in a Rashi Sicha about a, a place in Ha'azinu where Hashem is saying how good the Yidin were and, and Rashi asks, well, what did they do? And Rashi answers, the language is something like, Kiblu et Toroso Malchuso Vaolo. They accepted his Torah, they accepted his kingship, and they accepted his yoke. And then I've asked, what are these three things? He says, Toroso comes from the word, Torah comes from the word to teach, Hora'a. More. What the Yidden accepted was the things where God taught them the reason for the law, what we would normally call mishpatim. So what's malchuso? Malchuso are the things that Hashem asked of the Jews, where he didn't give an explanation. Gezerat hamelech, a decree from the king. They also did that. So the Rebbe says that seems to have covered everything. There were the things that Hashem asked for which he gave a reason. There were the things that Hashem asked for which he didn't give a reason. That's it. That covers everything. What is Olo? The Rebbe says Olo are the things Hashem didn't even ask for. But they ran like a loyal servant. Rotz ke'eved nemon. Lasot Ratzon Kono. They were eager to look for things they could, that they could do that was a Hidur Mitzvah. It wasn't demanded of them. We have the same thing in marriage. Sometimes our spouse asks us for something. It makes sense, so we do it. Sometimes they ask us for something. It doesn't make sense to us, but we know it's important to them, so we do it. But what's really also important is that we anticipate what they want. And if I said to your spouse, what did your husband or wife do this week, this month, where without you even asking, without you even thinking that he would do it, they went ahead and they did it, what would your spouse's answer be? That is one category of asetov. The other category of asetov falls in the area of, in Hebrew we say pinuk, in English to pamper. Where did you go out and do something extra special for your spouse that was just nice, that they didn't expect? You weren't helping them with a problem. This has nothing to do with problems. This was extra, ibrik. And if you think during the past year, what have you done where you surprised your spouse with something that just made them happy? It wasn't their birthday. Okay? It wasn't buying them jewelry right before a yontif. There was no chiyuv. There was no obligation to do it. You just did it because you wanted to find something that would gong their gong, that would blow them away. I'll give you an example. My wife and I at one point were being careful about spending because we were saving money for something. We went window shopping with friends in an artsy uh, area where there are a lot of specialty shops. And as we were going through, my wife saw a very beautiful, delicate necklace. And she